Good morning, beautiful people. In this episode, I'll show you how to create a B-roll or a cinematic sequence if you don't have enough footage. Yesterday, I wanted to create a B-roll only with my iPhone 7. In this episode, we'll create a cool B-roll using only my old iPhone 7. And we have our gorgeous model Kate here. You can follow her here. And now we go to shoot. Unfortunately, the sunlight starts running out and we decided to focus more on the photos than creating a video with my iPhone. So I have some really cool shots, but they're not enough to create a really cool B-roll. So in this episode, we'll try to create something really cool with not so much footage. The first thing we have to do is to create a plan how we're gonna attack the project. So to be able to create a plan, we have to check all the footage we have. I have a few shots with the drone, maybe one or two clips. I have 60-70% of the footage taken with my iPhone 7. Strange proof is what we're used to. I have a few clips with my camera. All right, that's me and, you. and I have a lot of photos. When I was running through my photos, I realized that I can do a stop motion with them. Something like time lapse. I was taking so many photos that if you speed them up, it looks mostly like a stop motion animation or like a choppy time lapse, and that looks really cool. So, here is the plan how we create awesome B roll. First, we have to check all the footage we have and go through it. Second, we have to convert all those photos to time lapse. Third, we have to go and find awesome music because if you have not perfect footage, the music can compensate for that. And the other thing, it has to be very fast paced music so we can change off on the picture. And fourth, we jump in Premiere and we edit the B-roll together. After I copied all the footage, it's time to import the photos in Lightroom, edit them a little bit and choose some nice sequences. I just chose my first sequence, it's time to cover grade it. The cover grading will be a little bit different than what my usual edits because we will import the images in the video and we have to match the colors with the video. And if I go crazy with teal and orange and push the colors, after that it will be really hard for me to match it with my video footage. And there is one huge reason for that. When you shoot RAW files, your images are all 14 or 16 bits and that gives you more information. When you record video, it's only 8 bits. So I can push the colors and how I edit the image two times more than I can push the video. And that's why here I will be a little bit more conservative editing the photos so I can do a good color match. Guys, sorry, I have to turn on the ventilator because here in Bali the laptop is overheating. That's one of my ways how I'm pulling down my laptop and I'm able to work normally because when it overheats, everything steps. Now let's first fix the color balance. I hope you don't hear the ventilator a lot. We shot the images during the day, so I set the light balance to 5500. Very important, let's activate the lens correction. I would like to push the blues towards the teal a little bit and to make the blues a little bit darker. That's why we'll jump to the HSL section. Let's darken the blues. That's going good. Let's push them a little bit. Something like that. I quite like it. Let's see what the aqua does. Okay, the aqua will push as well the aqua and darken it. How much to darken? Something like here. Greens. We don't have greens, but we have a lot of yellows. Let's push the yellow a little bit towards the orange. Darken it a little bit to make the sand pop out a little bit more. I'm quite happy with my edit. Now we'll sing the cover grade and export that sequence. When you export the images to create a time-lapse, don't export them full size because the computer will die. 
because the full resolution of my images is 6000, a little bit more than 6000 pixels. So I'll reduce them to something like 4000 pixels to match a good 4K. And now I'll try to extract several more sequences and do the same color grading. One hour later I managed to export 10 sequences. Now I'm gonna open Premiere and show you how we're gonna create the fancy time lapse out of them. One very important point which I forgot to mention, when you export the pictures with Lightroom, select the rename part. Because when you import them in Premiere it's very important that the images has the same name and number at the end. One, two, three, four. Like that Premiere is recognizing them as a sequence. In your bin folder you can just double click and then the import dialog will appear. Or you can just go right click and import. Now let's navigate to our image sequences and import the first one. Do you see how my files are named timelapse minus one, timelapse minus two? That's how the Premiere is recognizing that this is a sequence. You have to come down here, options and import image sequence. Now press import. In Premiere it automatically it's imported as a separate video already. If you import it, let's scale it down so it fits the preview. And now if we play it, perfect, works. Unfortunately, it's too fast and now we have to slow it down. So go back in your project bin, right click, go to modify, interpret footage, and let's make it 16 frames. So at the moment it's 25 frames and we want it to be a little bit choppy and a little bit slower. So let's make it 16 frames per second. Press OK and drag it again to the timeline. Now you can see that it's mostly twice so lower. Let's play it. It's still a little bit too fast. I'll try with 8 frames. I think something between 8 and 10 frames is exactly what we are looking for that B-roll. Let me show you the difference between 25, 16 and 8 frames. Two hours later you can find me on the same chair. It took me two hours to build that sequence because I had to build it two times. The first time I really disliked the way how I did it, so I had to start from scratch. Now I'm gonna tell you the secret source, how to make such identical shots not looking boring. I found really simple formula, but first let me tell you my first two goals. My first goal is to make the sequence not looking boring and the second one is to trigger some feeling. I cannot tell a full story with those clips because I don't have enough footage, that's why I'm trying to trigger some feeling in the viewer. Now let's move to the first one, how not to make it boring and I found the secret sauce here. First I'll place a wide shot, after that is coming a close up and on third place I'm putting the time lapse which we generated with Lightroom. After I have that block, I'll create a second block which is very similar to the first one. Wide shot, close up, time lapse. It can be something different as well, the white shot can be the drone shot. In that way I'm trying to catch the viewer's attention and make him watch longer. The second point is to trigger some feeling and what better than a little bit of nostalgia. How we gonna achieve that? We gonna add some film burns, some scratches and make the footage look a little bit vintage. In the description I'll place 2-3 websites where you can find such film burns for free. You can thank me with putting a like on the video. Now, because this video is kind of tutorial, let me show you how you use the film burns. First, you drag it in Premiere on top of your clip and then you change the blending option or to multiply or to screen. And after that, if the effect is too strong, just reduce the opacity. Easy busy, you just need to have the master file of the film burn. Now I'm gonna play the clip, but before I do it, two small things. The first one, small advertising from my side. I'm building a mobile course where I'm gonna show you how to unlock the full potential of your phone. So if that's interesting for you, go and follow the link in the description. The second thing, don't forget to watch the video till the end because I'm gonna show you something really interesting which we found out at the end of our photoshoot.
I'm really happy how the video turned out. We were on some epic place and we managed to take some epic footage. To be able to create that footage and those photos we went to really secluded beach because all other beaches in Bali are locked down and they're guarded by the police. But the more far away and hard to reach beaches are still open and you can freely go. Unfortunately we really didn't know how hard it would be to go to that beach. First we had to park our bikes on the top of a cliff and after that we had to go down with all our equipment plus a surfboard because we wanted to take a pictures with the surfboard. We really didn't realize that there is really hard to go. Whatever. It was hard to go but we managed. We stayed there for 3 hours, met the sunset, captured some epic footage and immediately after the sunset we start urgently packing everything because we didn't have any flashlights except our phones. So we packed everything very fast and start running up the hill. It took us mostly 40 minutes to climb back. It was really hard because I had 8 kilograms of equipment and the surf is really huge and uncomfortable to travel with it. So after 40 minutes we managed to reach our bikes on top of the cliff. My t-shirt was so wet like I went in the ocean and went out. We were soaking sweaty. But then the most magical thing happened. We saw the sky. I never seen so beautiful moon in my life and I never seen the Milky Way so clearly. And for those experience I quit my 9 to 5 job. We sat there for mostly half an hour resting and enjoying the environment and even that I'm receiving 10 times less money than on my 9 to 5 job at the moment. I feel 10 times more grateful and 10 times more satisfied. So guys, don't run after the money. Better run after your dreams and find a way to monetize your dreams. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that episode, please put like, subscribe and see you in the next one.